chapter hello dear students today we are going to discuss a chapter that is the summit within from your book honeybee it is the fifth chapter one but before going into detail about this chapter let me start my lecture with few lines from robert frost i shall be telling this with a shy somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference this very famous lines appear in the poem the road not taken this robert frost poem road not taken resonates to all the adventures that man attempts in his life so the road not taken the road that is less traveled by we all love adventure we are very much engrossed by it but only some of us can follow it only some of us can take the road so this adventures are really matters because to follow the adventure and to get the success only comes after the facing the real challenges in the in the chapter we we are going to see this kind of challenges how the writer overcome but before that let me ask you a few questions do you also in love with this kind of adventure do you ever feel like rock climbing do you ever feel like uh, climbing a mountain or go for a trekking or uh, swimming in a channel and cross the channel so these are we i as i already said that we are really passionate about this we really love this because that's definitely proves from our uh, interest in watching the discovery or animal kind of channel so this is the way we love it but some of us can only follow it so let us have a brief introduction of the writer in the next slide hari pal singh alwalia that is that hps alwalia was born on 6 november 19 16 1936 and brought up in shimla along with his two sisters and two young brothers so he was brought up in shimla and you know this is a very beautiful place in uttarakhand and this place is surrounded by the dreamy mountains and definitely the writer is very much in fond with fond of this mountains and you also see the academic career that is also very interesting he studied from dehradun in the school joseph's academy and in the college that is in mushawal so all the places that surrounds his life that really haunts him or that really make him impassioned passionate about the hills and the beautiful nature that he is getting inspired all the time so and that's that this being in, the, in such places like dehradun mushawal in shimla that inspired him to take the advantage of it to take to follow his own passion to rock climbing and he also before climbing everest he also climbed several other summits like garhwal sikkim in nepal ladakh he also had many trekking experiences <coughs> sorry so this major xps alwalia he was a member of the first expedition to mount everest in 1965 he was with hcs rawat sorry he was with hcs rawat and food orji that is a sherpa so they accompanied with him and this for the first time in world history that these three people climbed together in the summit yes and so apart from being a indian mountaineer hcs alwala he was an author he was a social worker and he worked a lot for the disability foundations and he also made his career in the indian army officer that's why you are calling him major during his career he also uh, made contribution in the fields of adventure sports environment and also in the field of disability he wrote many inspirational books like everest is within you higher than everest beyond the himalayas and that help many climbers to face the challenges what they faces in their life as well as while climbing he was honored with several awards like padma uh, bhushan arjun award and he also contributed still contributing in this wall of social work 
what are the adjective or the objectives in the next slide we are going to see the objectives of this chapter the chapter will make you understand the interconnected between climbing the external summit and the internal one what are the role of the three best qualities of our life that is the endurance persistence and will power and it is not only the physical change it is also at the same time the spiritual change that one goes through when one reaches the summit it also helps students understand that how they can apply their theoretical knowledge or their books knowledge to be to face the challenges in the practical world to reach the mental sum yes in the next slide we are going to know some uh, facts about mount everest as you all know it's very well known that it is the world's highest point at 8848 meters and 29 9029 feet from the sea level it is located in the himalayan shab range and the, within the international border between nepal and china so the normal route that people take that is the south reach one that is from the nepal and you know the first ascendants that is the ascenders sorry they are edmund hillary and tenjin norgay they made their summit in 1953 in the next slide we will see some interesting facts about everest that george everest who was the surveyor general of india he discovered the everest in 1841 and by his name we are calling the mountain everest one and 10 successful summits but one in 10 uh, of the climbers they aim say they everest grows 4 mm higher every year due to the tectonic plates and due to the geologic upliftment the youngest person to reach the uh, everest was 13 and the oldest one is the 80 is very interesting no that the youngest when he climbed the everest that was the age of 13 and the oldest one is the 80 in nepal everest is called sagar matha that is the forehead of the sky in tibet the mountain is called known as chomu lungama that is means the mother of the universe okay in the next slide we are going to start the chapter that is in the very beginning because uh, see children due to the lack of time i am not going to th through the thorough line by line uh, reading of the text but definitely i will highlight some significant portion of the text we are starting it this page number 76 of all the emotions the writer or the narrator hp is aluwalia he shared his reactions his emotions how he was feeling how he felt when he reached the summit he shares of all the emotions which surged through me as i stood on the summit of everest looking over miles of panorama below us the dominant one i think was humility so what is the meaning of the word panorama that is the wide view when he is in the highest summit as you have also experienced when you go to the watch tower and Uh, see the surroundings okay so in the same way the summit of everest he was on the world's highest world's highest place and the surrounding was a wide view and is a beautiful one he was also very happy but the dominant feeling that is the most important or the most dominant the strong feeling that he was happy that is the feeling of humility what is the meaning of the word humility the meaning of the word humility is to be humble to be respectful to others it is not that you raise the everest and you are the only person in the world to be the important person so it is the humility to be humble because he is in the highest in the peak of the high world's highest uh, of the peak sorry he is in the summit of the world's highest mountain and here he understand the impact of the whole universe the how the whole universe works however and he thanks to god thank god it's all over however instead of being jubilant there was a tinge of sadness why he was happy instead of being happy he was feeling sad why he answers that was it because i had already done the ultimate in climbing and there would be nothing higher to climb and all roads hereafter would lead down so he said because he thinks that that is the longest the craving he was craving for this day for so long 
and then he finally achieved this ultimate one. And there is nothing to do after that. There is nothing the highest peak there to achieve, to go and to climb. So it's only the only road that follows that is to climb downward. So there is no next target. That's why he is a bit sad. Next slide. In the next slide, we will see that how the narrator talked about how the experience changes him completely. As he says, the man who has been to the mountains is never the same again. He says that the person who climbs the Everest and the person who climbs down, the two, the same man is not the same one. Because this journey from the up to the upwards and the journey towards downwards, that changes the man completely. We will see how the man changes while reading the text. Then he next question himself. Why he wanted to climb mountains? What was the need of that? He tries to answer. He was not confused, he was not very definite in giving the answer. But he tries. Man takes delight. That is the general answer he first provides. Man takes delight in overcoming obstacles. The obstacles in climbing a mountain are physical. A climb to a summit means endurance, persistence and willpower. So, the first one, the challenges that somebody faces while climbing Mount Everest, it is the physical one. And the very three important things for make this physical adventurous journey, they are the endurance, persistence and willpower. Endurance is the your ability to survive, your ability to be keep on going. Persistence is the same thing that you do not give up. You survive, you bear it and willpower, your strong desire. Okay, because your the journey has to go on. It cannot stop. You cannot keep up. In the next slide, the writer gives a personal answer to that. He said how he was always very passionate about mountains from his childhood. As I already referred to you that he was brought up in Shimla. And then how he was always passionate about the mountains. Mountains are the nature at its base. Their beauty and majesty pose a great challenge. And like many, I believe that mountains are a means of communion with God. He said, many times the students are asked, means people, uh, people are not students, the people are asked, which thing you like visit? Is the seas of the oceans or the mountains? Which one? Somebody says it's the seas, somebody says they love the mountains. So, that is the thing that here the writer was in uh, opinion that mountains are the best of the nature. They are the nature at its base. And he thinks that it is also a means of communion with God. Communion is very close relation. When you reach the mountains, sorry, when you reach the mountains, you become very close to the God. Because you are almost very close to the sky. And whenever we talk about God, we just go, look upward and then we pray so this somehow we say that nature is controlled by god from there in the sky so when you reach very close to the sky you think yes god is there because it has a biblical reference also the ten commandments and how those uh, god uh, how most he got the commandments in the mount sinai so we will not go to the into it in detail so next in the slide we'll see the narrator's next question to himself First question was why he wanted to climb mountain. The next question was why he had, why he had chosen Everest. Why Everest? He answers, it is the highest, the mightiest and defied many previous attempts. Because the greatest thing and the greatest challenges, the thing that he want to face. Because Everest poses is the highest one and the mightiest, the strongest one and it is defied and it is actually refused, refused many previous attempts by men to conquer it. But the struggle with rock and ice was brutal and the journey downward is difficult, as difficult as the journey upward. But reaching the summit is like a battle fought and won. So, but it's not very easy to reach the summit definitely because the process of going there is a brutal struggle. It's a very cruel struggle with the rock and ice. You are in the death zone. There is a place called uh, in the Everest, it's called death zone because the breathing is very low. You cannot, it is very difficult to breathe. If only the oxygen cylinder is there with you, and it is a freezing cold, minus 30 degree, minus 40 degree. So there, you have to survive there. 
But after this brutal struggle with rock and ice, where you made this difficult journey, when the person reached the summit, it is the greatest feeling that someone that it was the battle was going on and you have fought the battle and you have won it. So it is the feeling of victory and happiness. Standing on the summit of Everest, along with the aloofness, ruggedness, and the silvery mountains, transport the narrator to a mystical world. So when he was standing there, he said, along with the aloofness, the distant, because you are in a very distant place, and a very lonely one, there is no one, there is uh, no other, there is not a public place. It is a very serene and silent and peaceful place. And ruggedness, along with the same time, there is the roughness of the mountains and the silvery mountains that is covered with the snowy eyes and the golden sunshine is also is falling on them. So it's a kind of spiritual, the writer's transfer, the writer thinks that as if he has been transferred to a world of spirituality, a world of the different one, it is the mystical one. There he says, there is and then there is a fact. But Everest is not just a physical climb. The man who has been to the mountain top become conscious in a special manner of his own smallness in this large universe. It's a very significant observation, dear children, that he says that this journey, this physical, it is not only a physical climb that man goes through. That when the person is at the top of the peak, and then, so the top of the uh, mountain, then he becomes how small he is. How small the human being, how small they are in the, amidst the vast universe. Just they are a little fly in this vast universe. And still they are so, so they are so, uh, they are so full of pride. And they are so full of confidence that they are the creator and they are doing everything. They are the only important persons of this world. But when you will definitely be in the nature, in the midst of nature, in the vast nature, you will definitely understand and the writer understands that how the universe is so great, so vast and you are only a small part of this universe. So that is the great realization that the writer has when he was on the summit. In the next slide, we will see that how the writer answers to the next question that he asks, why men love adventure? He says, there is a satisfaction of a deep arch to rise above one's surroundings. It is the eternal love of adventure in man. The experience is not merely physical, it is emotional, it is spiritual. So why men take love at the adventure? Because it is there in the nature of the man. It is the eternal love for the adventure because nobody is very satisfied with the surroundings in which he is confined. He wants to search, go above the surroundings. He wants to challenge the new things. He wants to face the difficulties. So that is how the adventure attracts the man towards it. But this adventure is not only very kind of action, full of actions. The action is not the physical one, but it is the emotional actions but it is the spiritual at the same time. The director shares the experience of journey to the summit. It's a difficult one. Every step matters and the help of each other is also very important because you one cannot make it. Because breathing difficult, you curse yourself. Why you just go on this journey? Why you have, why you thought about going for this kind of adventure? But when you will go through all the mental conflicts and when you will go, when you will overcome all these problems, then you will be definitely in the summit and you will feel the sense of victory over there. And you will, this, you will taste the sweetness of success. In the next slide, he says, at the end of Shriya's journey, there waits the breathtaking surprise. Yeah. When he finally reached the summit, apart from sharing his experience, he was overwhelmed by the beautiful surrounding that was waiting for him there. The major was moved by it. He says, other silvery peaks appear through the clouds. If you were lucky, then the sun may be on them. The surrounding peak looks like a jewel necklace around the neck of your summit. 
below you see vast valleys sloping into the distance it is an ennobling enriching enriching experience to just look down from the summit of a mountain you go down and make your obeisance obeisance to whichever god you worship so the writer describes here that how he was moved by the beauty of the surrounding because and he used a very beautiful metaphor he says the surrounding peaks of the summit they are like the beads of a silvery necklace and they are the beads of and they they are the beads and they make a necklace and the summit is the neck where the necklace is getting the necklace is decorated it's so beautiful and this experience is very ennobling and enriching one so this moved him as he already said that that he was feeling thankful to god and then he was actually showing his respect to god that is how he is very thankful to him and he bowed down to him he along with his friends they left many kind of symbols of gods and goddesses to show their respect to the mother nature now the narrator in the next slide you will see the narrator then comes to talk about the internal summit which is as equal as the external summit we need to understand it very clearly because that is the name of the chapter the title of the chapter is the summit within here the writer focuses on the how he reached the internal summit he explains is very beautifully there is another summit it is within yourself it is in your mind each man carries within himself his own mountain peak whenever you you go for any kind of action when you go for a very important one it is not only the climbing mountains even in your daily life you climb the summit of your mind you that's why when you able to be to reach the summit of your mind you become successful you become able to handle the situation so it is fearful and unscalable it cannot be climbed by anyone else you yourself have to do it the summit within you it is very fearful and it's unscalable you cannot measure the anxiety the agony is there while uh, making this journey but once you make this journey you can definitely get the consequences of it that is the success that is waiting for you it cannot be climbed by anyone the summit that is within you it cannot be climbed by anyone else you have to climb the summit you have to overcome the difficulties you have to face the challenges and you have to overcome it only the road is not be taken by another you have to follow the road alone he says it gives an inspiration to face one's life ordeals resolutely or this is the the dry days and with the resolutions in the with determination so this give you the inspiration when you can reach when you reach uh, climb the with mount internal summit so this also helps you or inspires you to face the challenges of life if it is life the internal summits are perhaps higher than everest but in the conclusion the writer say that he concluded by saying that maybe our mental summit is higher than the everest one because while you are climbing climbing physically at the same time you are climbing internally and when you are able to face the internal uh as in internal problems and reach the summit of your mind then only you are able to reach the summit of everest in the next slide it is he say it is in the internal summit which is more difficult to climb than everest the physical climbing along with the psychological and spiritual journey makes one to understand himself better and the world one i want to conclude this uh lecture with a lines by rabindranath tagore first i'll tell it in bengali then we'll see the uh, english many english because the poem has been translated by rabindranath tagore himself he says chitto jetha bhoy shunno uccho jetha shir gyan jetha mukto jetha griher pache apono prangono tole dibosho sarbori boshudhare rakhe nahi khondo khudro kori the writer translates where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free where the wall has not been broken into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the 
the day of the truth. Yes, that is the ultimate realization of the narrator when he reaches the mental summit while climbing the physical one. In the next slide, you can see some pictures that the writer shares in the summit. Is in the summit. He was along with his friends, Fudorji and uh, and Rawat. Next, it is followed by a video. There is a brief video clippings uh, that you will be seeing here. That how he uh, because there are many challenges. The avalanches were there when he, they were taking this journey. So how they face the avalanches. The oxygen cylinders was also uh, they are lacking some oxygen cylinders. The few oxygen cylinders were with them. So this will be the video where the writer shared these challenges. You will see to it. And here is a picture I have shared with you where the Prime Minister Narendra Modi he meets the members of the uh, Indian Everest expedition in 1965 on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of this on May 20, 2015. 2015 was the Golden Jubilee of this expedition, first Indian ex successful expedition of 1965. Here all the three were there, the captain, the colleague is there and all the other members along with the, along with the writer and here here all the other mates are there with him to celebrate this situation with the Prime Minister. Here is a, a, a postal stamp that has been dedicated to the successful expedition of 1965 and here the that is the in order to show respect to the successful expedition of 1965. Oh, uh, so these are the here uh, the writer uh, was awarded several times by the Prime Minister of the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh then and then the uh, president one also here are the pictures i have just uh, referred to you about arunima shinha he was uh, she was a, a volleyball player but later on she was due to an accident very uh, very severe one that he get lost of one uh, she get lost of one leg and being an amputee he get the wooden leg and then he also she also sorry, she also was successful in climbing the mountain in so these are the acknowledgement uh, and the links for uh, the pictures and the data and the video that I have taken. I am very much indebted to these links and the sources. I will conclude this lecture with a line uh, by Edmund Hillary. He says, it is not the mountain we conquer but ourselves. See children, that is the same thing that resonates with the lines that Major HPS Alvarli also says with us that it is not the mountain we conquer but ourselves we are not when you are climbing the mountain when you are reaching the summit it is not that you are conquering mount everest you are conquering yourself you are realizing yourself you are understanding yourself that is the main internal theme of the uh, chapter and that is the message that major hp alwalias alwale wants to convey Thank you dear student, I hope you will follow this one and you will definitely understand it.